Thank you, everyone. So I'm audible. So, as you know, I'm Utsav, working as a consultant at GBR Gurgaon. Uh, I have been a QA since the beginning of my career. <coughs> right now, I'm playing the role of a BA Scrum Master. And uh, these books are my hobbies. I like reading and blogging. So, uh, before I start, how many testers are here? Okay, so today I'll be talking about uh, how to automate mobile apps. Before we start, uh, the agenda of the talk is I'll be looking towards the problems. If we you know, go for uh, automation solution, the problems that we face, the framework we create for automation always you know, gives us some or other problems. So first of all, we'll talk about those problems. Then we'll talk about the ideal testing framework how should it look like, and then I'll propose a solution. Okay, so problems. Number one is development and maintenance itself, as automation frameworks are themselves, you know, a large code base. So developing them and maintaining them is a difficult task for QAs. I think QAs would agree here. The framework that we create are often, you know, not very adaptable with the changes and this is uh, another problem that we face. <coughs> then comes the accuracy. Accuracy, when I say accuracy, it is about the test cases. The test cases that we create are, you know, they should be accurate to point. They should neither be too detailed nor too loose. And then, the biggest problem, even if we automate a lot of things, the manual testing is still required. You know, the complete testing automation is not being done. Okay. So, requirements for having an ideal automation framework. The first point that I have written here is, if we have a framework which executes the use cases itself. If our use cases are them, them, or the acceptance criteria, criteria are themselves, themselves executable. Our framework should be robust, you know, so that the minor UI changes that occur should not affect our existing testing framework. The testing should be done in realistic environments. So when we are talking about mobile apps, it should support real, real devices so that we can test on different OS versions. Continuous integration support is again something that we really need. The test report should be comprehensive, which uh, you know shows us what happened in each and every step. If a test failed, why did it fail? on which step did it fail, and then uh, report output, uh, the output report should be flexible so that, you know, we can uh, import it in any format that we want. So this is uh, what I think an ideal requirement for an automation framework would be. If you have any other points, you could add. Test data? Test data, yeah. Okay. Test data, so how, do, how are we ta handling test data in our framework, okay? So it seems that we have almost covered most of the points. So the solution that comes to our mind is Cucumber. Uh, I think most of you must be aware about it. So Cucumber allows us to, you know, it, it is a framework that gives us a way to write software specification. And then those software specifications by, them, by themselves sorry, are executable. So these specifications in Cucumber, we write them as features. You can also consider it as user stories. So we write user stories, and those user stories are themselves executable. The specifications or um, user stories are written in DSLs, domain-specific languages. So this allows us to, you know, the thing that we are testing, the test case, you can say here, is understandable by the entire audience involved in uh, creating or uh, developing the product. 
So be it a PO, be it a uh, BA, be it a developer, be it a QA, be it a non-technical QA, because we are writing our test cases uh, or the specification in domain specific language, everyone can understand it. It works with Ruby, Java, .NET, a lot of other uh, languages, and that's the website. So this here is basically a feature or a user story which can contain multiple scenarios. So you know, a feature will contain multiple scenarios which is written in given when then format. When uh, when we write a scenario, uh, we can also uh, you know add something uh, as narrative over here, which is optional. So I'll also show it to you. Yeah. So this is a feature. I'm trying to test it. I have written a narrative, which is as a role, uh -huh. iOS developer, whatever role. The functionality, what I want to do so that I can verify this. Then I have multiple scenarios like we have for our user stories, we can have multiple test cases, we have multiple scenarios, and these acceptance criteria or specification are themselves executable. Excuse me. How are these features that we just saw executable? Because uh, these features are mapped to step definitions. How do we map the features to step definitions? Now, uh, you can see here, like, this is one of the steps. When I touch the add user button, so what basically we have done is, this is a regular expression, and inside it goes the code. So when you write a feature, it has multiple steps. Each step is corresponding to a regular expression, which is somewhere in your step definitions. Those step definitions then also contain the code that you want to execute. So this, uh, what I was talking about till now was about Cucumber. Now the tool that I'm talk going to talk about is Calabash, which leverages the functionality of Cucumber to, uh, and allows us to, you know, inter interactively test our mobile app. The best part of Calabash is that it is using the Cucumber interface for both iOS and Android testing. So the specifications or the features or the user stories, whatever you want to call it, once the BA writes them, you can test them for both your iOS and Android unless there are some changes that are required. It targets, of course, native and hybrid apps is just targeting. It allows to run our test on physical device. It is an open source tool. When I say uh, cross-platform testing, you can run your test on both iOS and Android. Now the architecture of a Calabash iOS, or uh, basically the architecture for iOS and Android are similar. So let's start with iOS. What happens is that you have to first of all download a static library called Calabash.framework and you have to link it to your existing framework. When you link it, that library contains a server, Calabash server. When you launch, and uh, one more thing that you need to do is you need to create a duplicate target of your existing app. Now when you run your duplicate target or build it, what happens is that Calabash starts an HTTP server on your simulator or device. You create your test cases in features which are basically mapped to step definitions and the Ruby client library is helping us to do so. So <clears throat> it contains of two parts basically, client library and Calabash framework. So uh, as I just said, we make a special test target, we link it with Calabash framework, this server, uh, Calabash framework, <laughs> starts an HTTP server, the Cucumber tool executes our future feature files, which are the tests. The feature files can contain predefined or custom steps. So now, uh, Calabash has created uh, some predefined steps, like I tap on this button, I tap on label, I scroll down, 
I pinch, I zoom, and stuff like this. So you can either use the, uh, their predefined test, uh, steps to test your mobile app, or you can also write your custom sets. <coughs> now, Calabash Android architecture, it is more or less the same. The server here is instrumentation test server. Everything else remains same. It, it is working the way it was working for Calabash IOS. Okay, so moving forward, I'll be uh, talking about Calabash IOS in details. So uh, some of the points are re repeating, but uh, they are important. App is built for testing by linking a static library. Now this static library is combination of UI automation and some private APIs. It supports interactive test development. When I say so, it actually gives us, uh, you know, a Calabash iOS console, which is basically an IRB, and uh, there you can run your queries to find the locators. It is based on Frank. Frank was an other tool which was using, using Cucumber for, uh, you know, testing mobile apps automatically. Touch synthesis. So as I told you, like we have predefined steps for pin pinching and zooming. So it provides us the capability of multi-touch or gestures. Then you have, it can use device access. Uh, okay, so we have the uh, accessibility inspectors in the device. You need to turn it on. Uh, I'm talking about iOS. So when, once you turn it on, what it does is, you know, for each and every uh, element, it provides an ID. Now, uh, Next part is queries, but before we go there, I'll just show you. So, this is the target, that duplicate target that we have created. The Calabash dot framework that, uh, the static library that we need to add, which has the server. And then we have our features, that is, our tests. So, uh, one of the test features I uh, you people saw earlier. Now, I'll also show step definition. So, <clears throat> as you can see here, these are the step definitions. The regular expression and then the code. When you run your features, it just maps the step which is under the feature into your regular uh, expression, and the code uh, beyond it is executed. Now, coming to queries. Calabash provides us uh, a mechanism to, you know, you can write some commands and you can fetch the element locators on the basis of label, text, and these queries are basically CSS-like. So it allows us you uh, it allows us to explore the app interactive interactively. To access that cons console, just you need to give this command Calabash iOS console. It takes you to that IRB, which is basically Calabash Calabash loaded IRB. And if you can see uh, as an example here, I gave a query button, and it returned me. It basically returns an array of all the objects on that particular view of your mobile app. So let's try to do this. Okay. So let me just exit. So this IRB is launched. Now let me see if my app will okay, launch the app. This is a sample app uh, for London Olympics. So here we have basically multiple buttons. This is the accessibility inspector that I was talking about. So we can see we have multiple buttons here. Now. What if I provide query? Query. 
the different list of all the UI buttons available on that particular view of my app. We have similar queries. So when I do query label, it provides me So the query function, it takes a string as an argument. The syntax of queries is based on UI script, but there are some uh, new implementations that have been added here. The UI script gives it, uh, gives it a nice CSS selector-like view, so which makes it a bit easier, like query tab bar button dot com, and it gives me four. Query tab bar button zero, and it gives me the value. Now let's test. This is how we, uh, now the things that I talked about allows us to you know, get into our app, make it testable, but how do we test? So as you people saw, uh, this is our app where, uh, on which I'll be running our test. So it is a tab event which contains multiple buttons. So let me first try to so I try to run a test where I said given I am on welcome screen, okay, then I touch mod and it says no, I can't touch it because on this screen we have nothing at mod. Now, let's stop it and we launch the app. So I have changed the test here. Now I want to touch the event, which is already existing. And I run my test. I would also Let's run it again. So that we can so I guess steps are getting executed here. So <coughs> this is one way of running your test. Now if I want to store my report in an HTML format, something like this. Then I just give a command and it is running my test in background. Yeah. Test executed. Now if I go to the directory, I open the report. So our test feature had two scenarios. Scenario was, uh, for one was example step. It ran all the steps, it took screenshot wherever we asked it to. And scenario two was another sample test, just one more screenshot. So you can, you know, get your HTML report. <coughs> now these features uh, of getting HTML reports, you can in fact see, this is Cucumber features. Because this is the capability of Cucumber, which Calabash is using. Getting back to our slides. Okay. Calabash also provides us, you know, like uh, prototype gestures. It has built in event sequence for touch, swipe, pinch, etc. These events can be re relocated or transferred according to the need. And it is extensible. Exten extensible in the sense that if the predefined or given uh, gestures are not working for you. You can, you know, record it and play back. Uh, right now, I'm not uh, demonstrating record and playback. 
So, <coughs> to summarize, uh, Calabash gives us these following, you know, advantages. Uh, two of the points that are not very good about it are provided here. That uh, it is not very good for games and for phone to phone coordination. It requires linking of a framework and it gives interactive development experience. So, this is how uh, it is. Now, I would like uh, some comments or feedback like what more do you testers or developers expect your automation framework to look like? Uh, for Calabash, right now you, you can use Ruby, and it's also it's also giving support for JVM. Uh, it's working on it, but right now it's Ruby. Yeah. Uh, what extra feature is it providing from the other vendors in the market with similar products? Uh, like if you say Frank, it does not allow physical devices. Okay. Uh, Apart from it, uh, I don't monkey think... Monkey talk, logic, all this. Okay, so uh, monkey talk, uh, I'm not very much uh, aware, but does it allow you to run the same test cases on both iOS and Android? Yes, okay. I, I haven't worked on monkey talk, so I, I can't compare this. What would you say is the out-of-the-box feature that this will provide with you should not be uh, Out of the continuous integration? You can, you can, uh, basically, uh, when this tool came up, it was a company called LessPainful.com who developed it, and uh, they gave this open source version. And if uh, they said that if you want, you know, a continuous integration framework, you should uh, get a purchase a you know version from us. We'll test your uh, entire mobile mobile app on cloud and give you the code. But then later on, they have provided some support uh, to integrate it with Jenkins. We have integrated, like in my project, we have integrated it with Jenkins and we are you know, using it. What about Tambu? Sorry? What about Tambu? No, I, I don't think it has any support for that. Right now. So this tool has the dependency on the accessibility labels, right? The app is not available. If, if the app uh, does not contain accessibility identifier, you mean to say? On iOS, uh, I think developers may correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, when you